Hey guys, subscribe for daily knife content. And if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. Hey everybody, before this video gets started, I just wanted to remind you all that tonight at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time, I'm going to be hosting a live stream celebrating 40,000 subscribers on this channel, and I'm going to be giving away 12 knives. I actually did an upload that explained how you can enter, and you can find that upload right down in the description. So, make sure you check it out, and we'll see you tonight at 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I'm going to be sharing with you 10 really great large folding knives that would also make excellent smaller folding knives. Now keep in mind before anybody gets all riled up, I'm a guy who likes a larger knife. I do. I like larger knives. I live in Kansas. I can carry these things. I own a lot of these knives, right? Um, but I also have come to appreciate the benefits of sometimes just carrying a smaller knife. Uh, each of these knives make excellent large knives. In fact, I don't want to—I don't mean to suggest that we should remove the large version of this knife and only have the small version. No, I think a small version being offered alongside of it would be really, really cool. Also, keep in mind that this is probably really difficult to do from a, you know from the manufacturer's or designer standpoint, right? There's a lot to consider other than just shrinking it down to some ideal length from some random YouTuber's thought, right? So yeah, it's not so, like like you know if everyone's just like do this that it's really easy to do this is me just hoping and dreaming and wishing out loud right coming to appreciate elements from some of these larger knives and thinking wow a smaller one kind of would be neat um and you know oftentimes in this video i'm not going to say that i'm not trying to necessarily shrink it down to a legal size that would benefit a whole lot of people just a smaller size that i think might be kind of interesting at least to me right so i'm sure a bunch of people are going to have lots of frustrations with this list and that's perfectly fine some of these might also have smaller versions in the works if i've heard that rumor i'll point it out um i'm not going to state anything as fact but i have heard rumors about some of this stuff so i'll go over that as we go over it uh i know some of you guys don't like the screen recorder thing that's fine if you don't want to watch it i've got lots of other content where i physically handle the knives in fact every single knife on this list has a physical review that you can go watch where i physically handle the knife uh, so if you're wanting more information on any individual model, you can just search Metal Complex and the name of the knife. I will also include these knives, their original forms, down in the description so you can check out the current or full-size versions of each of these knives uh, for yourselves. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. And if you'd like to check out my Patreon, there's a link for that right down in the description. First off here, the Microtech SOCOM Elite. I love this knife. It's huge. It's nine inches overall. <laughs> I'd really like to see, given how the handle doesn't curve at the back, forcing your hands into a specific spot, it kind of just tapers off, right? I got plenty of room on this knife. I would love to see a 7.5, 7.75. I understand the original SOCOM was actually smaller. I, I want to say it was like 8 inches. I'd kind of like to see a more, not mini, I don't want to see a mini SOCOM, I just want to see a smaller one. Maybe th seven and a half inches with a three and a quarter inch blade. Keep the thickness though. Don't thin it up. I know people are like, why wouldn't you want to thin it up? The, the spine is 190 thousandths and it's kind of thick. By I don't know, I find that charming about the SOCOM Elite. I like a thick, robust knife. I think it would be cool to have the same height of blade, the same thickness of blade, the same width, exactly the same thing, just squish it down. I just, I don't know. You let me know if you kind of think that would be cool. I would love that. I would love to carry a smaller, but just as chunky SOCOM Elite. I think that would just, I don't necessarily have a problem. I mean, it's only, what is this? Five ounces, five and a half ounces. It's not really that bad for how big of a knife it is, but it would bring it down to probably four and a half ounces. And it would just be fun, right? And it'd be just as robust, just as capable, but a little bit less cutting edge. And you should, I mean, at least my guess would be you'd still have plenty of handle room. I think that'd be really cool. So I wanted to bring that one up first. Oh, good. The heater's going to shut off for the rest of the video. Moving on here. I have heard a rumor about the Cold Steel 8015. I have no idea if it's true or not. Maybe it is, and I'm just under a rock, and I don't know. Or maybe it's total nonsense, and this is just me thinking I heard something, right? I honestly, I can't even tell you who, who I heard it from. The Cold Steel 8015 is a big knife. Uh, this is a uh, Andrew Demko design. Eight and a half inches, I think. Eight and a quarter inches, something like that. Again, 
I'd kind of like to see, you know, seven and a quarter inches, seven and a half inches, and a three to three and a quarter inch blade. Why? Because that scorpion lock, while once you figure it out, it is easy to manipulate, right? You can figure out the leverage points. I think if it was just a little bit smaller, it might add to the fidget factor, uh, the uniqueness of, the, of that lock, right? Again, I don't want it to be less thick, less robust, right? I imagine if they did do this, they probably would do a little bit thinner blade stock, maybe a little bit, maybe. I kind of like the, ch the meaty, robust, overkill, you know, design. I like that. I would all, I'd just like a shorter version. I think it would be just a little bit easier to manipulate. Considering the profile of the handle, right? That butt end back there, it's gonna make it a little bit hard if you've got hands like mine, because it is gonna kind of confine you in that space. If they do a shorter one, I don't know. I, listen, like, obviously, I'm <laughs> Andrew Demko's a master knife designer. So me sitting here with my little camera going, Ibby, you just shave that thing off the back. Like, that's just some guy on the internet saying, in this ideal situation where you made a smaller one, maybe you should cut the thing off the back. I don't know. I, you know, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt, right? I'm sure there are reasons for design choices, but if you did a smaller one, solving an issue of being cramped on the handle position back there, if you're not gonna choke up on it, if that back area was kind of shaved off and the handle just kind of went straight out to the butt, then you wouldn't feel so cramped in there, but you could also choke up on it. And considering how he did the forward swell, I think he'd still have plenty of room, right? Probably, this probably would need to be seven and a half inches to seven and three quarter inches and a three to three and a quarter inch blade, something like that. I just think it would be cool to be a little bit smaller. It might be a little bit easier to manipulate, especially with people with smaller hands. I don't know, just thought, I think this. I think that'd be super cool. Moving on here, yeah, I've been saying this for a long time. This is the Hinderer Full Track. Before you guys try to rush out and buy this, you can't, it's gone, right? You might still, you might find a few floating around it's at random you know, retailers here and there. This black wash one is beautiful. I can guarantee that this this thing is just completely, <laughs> this particular one that you're looking at is completely and totally unavailable. This thing is gigantic. This is also very expensive. If you're not familiar with Hinder knives, this was a $600 knife, right? Uh, I, uh, I had one for a little bit and I loved it. It was just huge. We have a half track. People are gonna be quick to point out. We have a smaller version of that. It's called the half track. I know, <laughs> I know about that one. That one's a little teeny tiny little tank, right? Half track, full track being tanks. Or originally, that's that's where you got the name. I know that a mid or medium track is not like it wouldn't make sense because that's not historically a thing. And that's the idea with this knife. But this is the case of gigantic meets teeny tiny. We had like a huge version. We had teeny tiny version. I'd love a medium version of this. Now, I know that there are rumors of a new version of the full track coming out. Maybe one that's going to be a little bit less expensive, both to the end user and to, to make. Apparently, these were really expensive to make. I don't know. Again, I don't speak for Rick Hinder, just speaking on things that I've heard. So I don't know that to be factual, right? A medium version of this, eight inches, eight inches or so, uh, I think would just be excellent. I love the fact that the tool for disassembly is built in as the backspacer. That's that little thing you're seeing there. Uh, that little cutout in the middle of the spine on the handle, that the the tool, the backspacer is the tool for the for disassembly for the entire knife. There's a small head, and then as the head drops, there's a larger head, and that fits all the little inlay screws, and it also fits the pivot and the the hardware screws on the back. Underneath the overlay is where you can house the triway pivot hardware, which is amazing. You can take the thing apart and and in the field and change out the pivot harder depending depending on what you're going to be doing with it. That's cool. I just want a smaller version of it. Uh, a a mid-track, <laughs> I guess. I don't know what you'd call it. If you guys have names for, um, like, interesting and clever names for some of these hypothetical smaller knives, I'd be interested to hear what you guys would call them because they couldn't just be called the smaller whatever, right? Um, so, yeah, if, that's, if you want to comment, leave that down below. I think that would be excellent. Moving on here, the Spyderco Shaman. The mini Spyderco Shaman already exists. It's called the Lil Native, right? Or the the Sage 5 or the what? Listen, saying that we, we, we don't need a smaller version of, in this case, the Spyderco Shaman just because other versions of Spydercos that are kind of Shamanesque in nature already exist is meaningless. And I'll tell you why. Spyderco will create any variation of any knife infinite times over and has. So it's not crazy to want something like this. 
I don't want a little native. I don't want a chaparral. I don't want a native five. I don't want the sage or other knives that are kind of like the shaman, but small. I don't want those. I literally want a smaller shaman. I've been saying this for a while. In fact, I actually made a post about it on Instagram like a year ago or a year and a half ago. And Nick should be... <laughs> I, I was like, you know, I mean, I was like, how cool would this be if they shrunk this? Not I love the shaman. It's eight and a quarter inches overall, right? I would love a more para three sized shaman. Seven and a half inches, uh, seven and a quarter, probably about seven and a half inches with a three, three to three and a quarter inch blade, something like that. That's kind of the general, you know, theme here. Um, and in the post, I called it the shamini, and Nick Shabash chimed in, the, the, the king of puns. He said you should call it the shaboy. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Your man, your boy. All right. Um, but yeah, that that would be cool. I'd like that. Look at the ergonomic lines in this thing. We got plenty of room for this to be a smaller knife, and you can still make use of the Shaman's excellent ergonomics. I want literally this, but smaller. Honestly, we could go a little bit thinner on the spine with this guy. Um, and uh, I don't know that I'd want it to be smaller like I don't want it to, I don't want it to be shorter like in handle height I want it to be shorter in length right so keep the same sort of robust nature maybe thin the spine down a little bit um and uh yeah I think this would be excellent the, the I mean other spider co knives that have the compression lock in combination with the opening hole work really really well. and I mean if like seriously case in point spider co pm2 spider co para 3 right the Spyderco Para 3, other than a couple teeny tiny little differences, is basically just a shrunk down version of the Spyderco PM2. And you know what? I like it way more than the PM2. Some people are going to disagree with me, but that's I carry that more than anything. The only reason the Spyderco Para 3 gets more pocket time right now than the Shaman is because the Shaman is just... It's just a little bit too big for what I use my knives for, right? Now, honestly, obviously, if you're somebody who uses your knives in more, you know, heavy-duty you know, consistent cutting stuff, you might want a larger knife. So this list and this idea isn't going to be beneficial for everybody, but that's why I'm saying don't replace the law. I'm not, not like I have any pull at all saying hypothetically, if we were to do this, I wouldn't want the original large version to be gone or replaced by a smaller version. No, I just want a smaller option because I think it would be interesting. A smaller shaman, a shaboy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I'd love that. That would just be great. Exactly this, not a little native. I want the contouring, I want the shaman profile, I want the shaman, but I want it smaller. That's what I want. Just saying it. Spider Co. Python. Yes. Got, a lot of you guys have noticed that the Python is in the 2021 catalog for Spider Co., which is wonderful. I'm going to buy this knife. I'm assuming the reason that it's there is because. We're going to get some CQI, some stuff that people complain about, maybe hopefully fixed with this knife. That'd be great because I love how this looks. This is the most beautiful Spyderco knife that they've ever made. It's also gigantic. Exactly this. The S90V, right? The Resenti, all the exact Resenti lines. The, uh, the integral or integral nature. For those of you who are going to correct my pronunciation no matter what. Um, yeah, but a little bit smaller. We have lots of room on the handle, an enormous amount of room on the handle. You could easily make this into a, well, I say easily. You could easily make, oh, just make it smaller. Like it's that easy. I'm sure any, any manufacturer that's watching this video is like, I hate this guy. He's just like, make it smaller. <laughs> no, there's a lot, there's a lot of things to consider, I'm sure, when making it, trying to squish a design down to something smaller, you know? But hypothetically, it'd be cool, right? Handle, you, you, if the handle was shorter, you'd still have, in my, my hand size, so we're an XL glove, which doesn't mean anything. It means I have a pretty normal sized hand. I'd still have plenty of room to get a full purchase on this guy. The blade would be a little bit shorter and would still be, you know, a length, again, if we came in between three. And ideally for legal stuff, it would, a, a lot of these knives would appeal to a wider range of people if they were 2.9 inches or less. Not, it wouldn't solve a problem for everybody, but it would solve a, uh, problems for a lot of people who really would love to EDC some of these larger knives, but can't because the law cuts them off at three inches, right? So two, I understand 2.9 inches or less would be ideal for a lot more people, but eh, just smaller. Seven and a half inches, 2.9 inch blade, something like that. Seven and a quarter inch. I would, I would like that. I would like that a lot. It would still be expensive. Just because a knife is smaller doesn't mean it's gonna cost less. You have to consider still you know, the cost of machining, stuff like that, it's, you know, 
even if they're machining less of the material, it's still going to roughly probably be around the same price, which is why we don't see a big difference when you're looking at like the mini Griptilian versus the full size Griptilian or the Spyderco Para 3 versus the Spyderco PM2. Probably about the same call. I don't know. I don't, I'm, none of this is factual, right? Just take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt. Yes, smaller Python would be awesome. And finally, definitely, because I've actually seen one of these things modded and it was wonderful. First off, go check out uh, Everyday City Carries Instagram. I think he has a post about somebody who specifically does this. So there's a modder who takes larger knives and just shortens them up. He did the Capara or Capara, Spider Cap Capara. And I was like, holy crap, that is awesome. He shaved uh, maybe 20% of the handle off and maybe 20% of the blade off and turned it into a more, much more sheep's footy sort of knife. Uh, but gosh, the size was excellent. I love this. I think this is one of the best knives that Spyderco's ever come out with. But we need a shorter version. This, to me, this is like the hyper exotic, like the ultra fancy version of the PM2. That's what it looks like to me, right? If the, um, if the PM2 is a Camaro, the Capara is, is the Corvette, right? That's what it, that's what it looks like to me. Um, we need just, we just need a shorter Corvette. I, 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 you know, the PM2's got the shorter version. We have the pair of three. I would love to see a mini version of this. And I'm sure there's a spider co uh, a spider pun that they can put in there because the Capara is a redback spider from Aust Austria or Australia. I think it's Australia. Can't remember. You can correct me down in the comment section. And at the same time, tell me what you'd call this. Yes, please. Uh, mini Capara would be great. Moving on here, this is a weird one. Um, this is the Emerson, the ZT Emerson, and of course I'm going to forget the number because I can never remember the ZT numbers. Um, but yeah, this is still in production, um, and this is a collaboration with uh, with uh, Ernie Emerson. Um, yeah, I like everything about this knife, honestly. I think this is one of my favorite ZT knives that's currently in production. I love it. A lot of people don't like the. Um, you know, the, the color of the carbon fiber, and that's fine. This is a big knife. I think this is a 3.75 inch blade, and I think it's an eight and a half inch knife overall. Literally this, once again, shrunk down to about a seven and a quarter to a seven and a half inch package. Um, it kind of, it's gonna be like, imagine the Benchmade 940, but a little bit longer, and then the new Benchmade 945, but a little bit longer. That's kind of the idea here. But I think they should do maybe a different, I mean, hypothetically, if they did this, I'd love to see a different, maybe their blue and black carbon fiber. Ooh, that'd be really nice. I'd like that. That would be cool. It's just me hoping and dreaming and wishing, right? Yeah, absolutely. This is a big, a larger ZT um, that a lot of people like. And I think a, a lot more people would enjoy in a smaller package. But I don't know. This is, I, I think this is one of those where it's going to be, there's going to be way less people going, <laughs> we need that. There might be a few people going, yeah, that'd be kind of neat, right? I just, I always looked at this and thought, I love the full-size version. It's not hard to carry as a full-size knife. It's actually pretty easy as a large knife, but I'd also like a shorter one. The It's easy access to the thumb disc. It's easy to manipulate, right? Um, but I think a smaller one would still give you plenty of room for a full grip and plenty of access to that thumb disc, making it arguably just as easy to deploy as this guy. Of course, it'd be premium, titanium, carbon fiber, and 20 CV. Yeah, that'd be cool. Moving on here, this is also another one I've heard a rumor about. Perhaps it's been confirmed, perhaps not, I don't know. Sometimes I kind of feel like I live under a rock. But maybe just to bring it to people's attention, yeah, the Koenig Arius. I, I mean, they've done flipper delete versions of these guys where they've got the big choil up front. Exactly that, not a flipper. Maybe some people do would want a mini flipper. This is very expensive, by the way, and also very hard to get. I think these start at 500, 550 bucks and they go up and up and up from there. Um, yeah, this is a big knife, eight and a half inches overall. I think a mini one would be great, but for me, it'd have to be not a flipper and with a forward choil. Again, I've heard m m a little more than a rumor on this one, so maybe it doesn't make, I still wanna put it on the list because I wanna talk about it. <laughs> I love that. This thing has, is, is uh, the, the opening hole is amazingly well positioned on this guy. Right, um, and even if they didn't do a big forward choil or a strong forward choil on the mi on a mini one, right? They deleted the flipper. It would, I mean, you'd you'd have the same level of fidget factor. It'd just be in a smaller package. This would be 
excellent. Excellent. And if they are planning on this, if Bill Koenig is planning on doing a mini one, then bravo. That's excellent. Uh, moving on here. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Umnum's on. I... You know, if you look at uh, Chris Reeves, the Chris Reeve uh, line, we have the large and the small Sabenza, and we have the large and small Nkosi, and then we have some other knives that are exclusively small. The Menandi, the, what's the other slip joints, right? And then there's the Umnumzan, which is this big hulking battle tank of a knife, and I love it. I think this is the greatest knife that, that has ever come out of uh, Chris Reeve knives. Absolutely. Would a smaller one be awesome? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they'd probably thin the tie up. They'd probably thin the spine of the blade up just like they do on the large and small versions of the other knives. Lots of room on that handle. Lots and lots of room. What is this? Eight and a half inches overall, something like that? Yeah. You need a same, you know, proportionally smaller knife, you know, for looking at the Inkosi or the Sabenza. And you know what? Because of the handle, I would make an argument that a smaller one, I, this, the handle is not nearly as confining as well, the Sabenza just has no major guide for your fingers. The Inkosi has very specific major lines for your fingers. And this is somewhere in between. So I think it would translate really well to a smaller version. Love that sort of double harpoon. I like the standoff thing. Keep it's obviously exactly the same, just small. Mini Umnumzan would be excellent. Mini Umnumzan kind of sounds anticlimactic. What would we call this <laughs> if it existed? That'd be cool. And moving on here, one that's gonna make a whole bunch of people mad, the ZT0452. We already have that, it's called the ZT0450. Pass. I don't like that knife very much because it's so skinny and because the back handle, once again, the reason that this, this thing is huge. What is the blade length? 4.1 inches, it's nine and a quarter inches overall, something like that, massive. Definitely one of the coolest ZTs that's ever existed and it still exists, you can still buy this. It's great. Uh, the back end of this knife is not a problem in its current state because it's so large. If you shrunk it down, as they did with the ZT0450, it creates a problem ergonomically where you can really only fit, in my experience, three fingers comfortably. That's why I don't like it. It's too skinny, it's too narrow, right? It's too small. I want exactly this knife, not the 0450. I want exactly this knife. Same blade thickness, same blade height, same handle thickness and height, shortened down to about eight inches something like that which is a good medium but then i that back hump and the handle would have I, again in my opinion would have to be shaved off to make it comfortable maybe some people could squeeze in there maybe even i could squeeze in there right but imagine with me exactly that <laughs> i know people are going to be like that's dumb <laughs> that's dumb because it already exists fine it's dumb it's still something that i think would be cool I would like that. I really like this knife. I owned it. The, they did a sprint run a, a while back in full titanium. Loved it. Wish it was a little bit smaller because it's so big. This is a pocket sword. And that's cool. Some people really get their enjoyment from carrying a larger knife, even if they know that they, they're not going to need it. I get it. Day to day for me, I found that I just kind of like... I mean, I still do carry my larger knives, my full-size knives, and I like them. But once the novelty of that wears off, which it does fairly quick... They go in the display case, or they go in the pouch, and then I go back to my perfectly sized Spyderco Para, Para 3. That's just what I like to carry. So it would be nice. A lot of these, this is the end of the list, by the way, if you can't tell by the, you know, descending nature of my dialogue. This is the end of the list. This is, this, these are just my thoughts, right? I'm sure there's a lot of other knives I could have included on this list. If you have other thought, other knives that uh, are exclusively large that you think would have, you know, uh, made a good place on this list, then let me know. Put it down in the uh, comment section. But I, I am interested to hear what you guys think about this entire list and what you would call these knives if we had smaller versions of them. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. I think I'm at the, yeah, I'm at the end of the list. Like I said, links for these larger guys right down in the description because they are all very, very recommendable. Um, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.